like I say at the beginning of every fucking video, uh, if there's any YouTube frogs watching this, if you guys enjoy your stay, feel free to drop a like and a sub. Uh, if you really enjoy your stay, feel free to stop in to a Twitch stream sometime. Second link in bio would mean a lot. Um, and if you want to watch the original video without me yapping over it, uh, click on the fucking first link in the description, which is the original video. Because I sort of got a new move. That's real. I could be tortured and I still wouldn't admit things like that. Yeah, dude, that, that video was crazy. Okay. Anyways, let's tap in. This is, this is a video by Too Lazy to Try. Ronda Rousey calls out Joe Rogan for turning on her. Yeah, I'm interested here about Ronda Rousey because I've heard a lot about, like I've seen her name a lot, but I don't know the details. All right, so Ronda Rousey recently called out Joe Rogan for turning on Oh, I, I didn't, Josh. Her after she lost the Holly Holm fight. Because if oh. you remember before Ronda lost, Joe was a huge fan of hers. Some would say her biggest fan. I mean, he was hyping her up like crazy and got pretty carried away with it at times. Like, if you remember at one point, he said she could beat half the male bantamweight division. I'm not oh. happy that Ronda Rousey lost, but in a way, it makes things easier. Because there was a bunch of fucking people that were going, oh yeah? What about Ronda Rousey? She'll kick in. And, and I made the mistake of saying, like, hyperbole, okay? I'm the master of hyperbole. I exaggerate all the time. I was like, she could probably beat half the men bantamweights in the, in the UFC. Is that true? <laughs> no, it's not, definitely not true. <laughs> Shouldn't have said it at the time. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> now it's definitely not true. She could beat a few that aren't good outside the sport. Look, if she gets guys in the ground, she could fuck a lot of people up. Her judo is 100% legit. Her arm bars are amongst the best. And I think one of Ronda's problems was people are hyping her up too much. Because clearly, there's a lot she could have been working on, but... Ronda Rousey is not just a once-in-a-lifetime athlete. She's a once-ever in human history. Joe Rogan, November 15, 2015. Joe's opinion on Ronda now... Compared to two years ago, it's just beautiful. But nobody's really being honest with her about it until obviously after she lost. But before that, Rogan was completely sold on her. I remember a time when Joe Rogan thought Ronda was a, an ancient, majestic, immortal hybrid warrior from Narnia. Striking and thought her coach was doing a great job with her, which as we know now are two other things. That's fucking wild, by the way, Austin. But good that... He at least asked for money, got some bread. Things that led to her downfall, you know, her striking and her coach. You guys tra training in Brazil on the beach, those one of those workouts. I was about to say, isn't this old ass fucking Joe Rogan set? Out days. Oh, the and, workout. And uh, you fucking hitting mitts. And I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what the f Yeah, this has got to turn to like modern day, right? fuck is going on in your gym because your your striking has accelerated in these giant jumps like every three or four months when i watch like you hit mitts i'm like what the f are they doing like <laughs> speed is retarded oh sorry every now and, every now and then when i hear that word i'm just like huh huh what <laughs> well the thing is people forget that like when i won the title the first then, time it was my it was like my fifth profile Yo, look at after i was just getting started mm -hmm. yeah defense. it's not like hit and stand it's so much different you know been this guy well you have a lot of striking knowledge it's very obvious i've seen the work you've done with ellenberger and with my travis paper yeah, word. so joe was just way too confident in her probably because the hype around her was helping grow the sport in the women's division but it was a double-edged sword. You know, obviously she became insanely successful and famous, but I think that probably distracted her and caused her to become way too cocky and confident in the competition around her. Just Dude, I feel that 100%. We were talking about this with artists the other night. Like, a lot of the times, once you get to a certain level, you feel like you're untouchable and, like, you can't, re like, relate or be touched in any way. I feel like that probably happens a lot with fighters, too, you know? I feel like they're untouchable because I beat the fuck out of her when they fucking rose so fast. But if you don't fucking stay and hone your craft, you're just going to get cooked, bro. So annoying when I just want to chill and someone points out a hundred things I haven't done yet or asked why I don't go hang out with my four, with 40 different people. I'm sorry, Chucky. I want to be touchable, Sag. Yo, what? Just end up getting much better. And I think when she lost, pretty much everybody realized that, including Rogan. And it sounded like he tried to give her advice, but at that point, it was too late, and she oh. wasn't going to listen to anybody. Oh. So I'll get into that and what Ronda recently had to say about Joe. I feel like if Joe Rogan, with his fucking background in the UFC and shit, tries to give you advice, like it's good at least to hear him out, you know?
Maybe she did. I don't know. Oh, here in a second. But first, I want to talk about today's sponsor, Factor. Chat, fucking here. Here's the link to the fucking video. I did this the last time. There was an ad in the fucking video. I don't want to hear about Factor for the fucking four billionth time. You can go use Too Lazy Too Late's code to get 50% off your first Factor box, plus 20% on your next box. If you want to go watch the ad that he's got here, it starts at 2.38. Let me just, uh, let's just, uh, here you go. Dot com or click the link below and use code too lazy 50 to get 50 percent off your first fact oh, sorry box too lazy 50 percent off your next box again that's code too lazy 50 yeah they already got paid for that space it's fucking fun factor 75.com to get 50 percent off your first box yeah so like i was saying once ronda lost then joe started to be more honest about her and it was stuff that she needed to hear and listen to but at that point i think anybody who would criticize her game she just thought of as a hater you know, like she says Rogan turned on her, which obviously he did go back on a lot of the stuff he was saying. But I think her loss just woke him up and he's like, oh, shit, there's a lot she needs to be working on, which is something she should have realized after she lost. But I think instead she just came up with a bunch of excuses. You know, like now she's going around saying that she fell down the stairs a couple weeks before the fight and tore her what? ACL and got a concussion. And then her mouthpiece was messed up during the fight. And then she said at that point she just had too many concussions and couldn't take it anymore. So I think she's also kind of pissed that Rogan and the people who turned on her didn't wait nine years to hear the full story before they commented on her loss. Like this was recently brought up when she was on the Chris Cuomo project. And he mentioned how mad she must have been hearing everybody talk about how... Chris Cuomo? Isn't that the guy that was the governor? Am I tripping? That's a different Cuomo, right? Or... Anyways, sorry. She wasn't what she was made out to be, and the competition just got so much better than her. Meanwhile, the only reason she was losing is because of the head injuries, she claims, which Chris Cuomo, of course, completely believes. And he's kind of just insulting Holly Holm and Amanda Nunes because he says Ronda's losses had nothing to do with the competition. And he's like, yeah, if anybody hit you in the head, you would have been basically out. What was it like for you to have people doing all this guessing about whether it was fear or you'd lost your heart or that the game had caught up to you and there were just different skill sets around you that you couldn't compete with anymore and you wanted to say this that this is not what it is i can't, I can't my kid could hit me in the head and, and it might destabilize me it has nothing to do with them it has everything to do with my head why yeah. what was it like to not say that um you know, it was really like disappointing just to to see how how happily everybody had turned on me and how, you know, people like Joe Rogan who were like crying in the Rivers Cuomo was the former New York governor. Okay, thank you. Appreciate you. I was about to Google it because I was like, wait, no, it's not Chris Cuomo. The ring out of the honor of being able to call my fights had like, you know, people that I considered friends in the media so quickly. Oh, know. it's Andrew. Anywho. Oh, you dirty liar. I'm about to Google this myself. Rivers is the lead singer of Weezer. <sighs> I'm ending it, dude. Holy fuck. Anyways, let me back up a little bit here because I missed part of what she's saying. People like Joe Rogan who were like crying in the ring out of the honor of being able to call my fights had like, you know, people that I considered friends in the media so quickly, you know, turned on me. And it sounds like she really just couldn't handle people being honest about her for once. Like, I understand Rogan and a lot of people got carried away with the hype and were just kind of blinded by everything that was going on. But as a commentator, you know, if Rogan had continued on the Ronda Rousey hype train and started making excuses and defending her like crazy and was just in denial about what was happening, then he would have lost all his credibility. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, he has to be a fucking realist at the end of the day for this shit. Like, especially since... uh fucking UFC is like his fucking bread and butter, you know? Like, that was what he, like, part of what he came up on. Uh, he's gotta be honest. Like, I I feel like she can't take it personally that he has advice or things that he's gonna say about her if she is at the point where she is not in a good place and not at the same level as she once was. I mean, that's just, again, me from the outside looking in. My, my two cents on it. So at least he was content. I'm I got three minutes left on this video, and then yes, I am there. Andrew Cuomo has nipples pierce nipple piercings. There are photos, and he wears way too tight of shirts. 
Nice. So able to be honest about it, even though I'm sure he knew Rhonda wouldn't handle it well and it'd probably ruin their relationship. But he never even really said anything that bad about her. You know, I think most of it was just constructive criticism, which she definitely needed to hear. You know, if she had listened to him, it probably would have gone much better. Like he definitely wanted her to get a new coach and probably take more time off and definitely not fight Amanda Nunes. And it's funny because he even brings up some of the head injuries. He's like, yeah, if you're going to take that many kicks to the head, you got to take time off. Like that really takes... It, okay, I don't I don't know Ron Rowley's story. So yeah, I was about to say like, fucking damage to your fucking head is like, you, you can't fuck with that shit. You got to take that shit seriously and give yourself... It sounds like Joe Rogan's trying to say it. Like you need to give yourself time to recover, which is 100% true, bro. Like what the fuck? Uh, I'm back. My bad. I'm doing... Oh, dude, you're good, bro. You ain't got to apologize to me. Uh, by that, I mean I'm doing laundry, but I got the pen in Mango, Arizona with me. My game might break a few times, so sorry if that happens, Chris. That's fine. Chris, content warning. Yo, soon, soon, very soon. Let me get through this. I'm almost done. Takes a toll on you. So he even takes into account the concussions that she got. I mean, I remember out. Edmund telling me that, you know, he had a background in Taekwondo and, you know, he can't kick Ronda and no one's going to be able to kick Ronda. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> you're like Edmund. I was like okay bro what the fuck happened you said you I remember just from him saying that I was like okay what Let me, can I just see you kick can yeah. I just see what this background looks like like yeah. this, it's just it's just a goddamn <laughs> giant difference between her approach she need a lot of things yeah she need a lot of things because people knew first of all she never shoots for doubles she's not taking you down with a lower body attack it's always upper body and it's always a clinch and she clinches with her left arm I mean, Greg Jackson uh, and Jackson Wayne oh, John, they all figured shit. that out, and yeah. Holly had the solution for that. Yeah. Yeah, that makes total sense. So, probably a coach change would have fixed that, yeah? I feel like if your coach is so blind and teaches you the exact same thing over and over again, at least, again, this is me outside looking in, then, yeah, a coaching change would have fixed that because they would have been able to recognize that and then coach her not to do that shit. Yeah. You know, and also there's another thing is when you get fucking head kicked into oblivion that way, yeah. like you need a lot of time off, you know, a lot of time with uh, no sparring, no nothing. Especially and you have to go to them. You have to go to them and you have to like submit yourself and say, look, huh? let's fix this. Let's fix whatever I'm doing and let's see if we can take this to the next level because the sport evolved and the sport passed her by. Like she was at the very top, but if you build it, it's like that Field of Dreams movie. I mean, look at the fucking NFL, like fucking. 20 years ago, it was fucking, like, way more reliant on running backs. Even 30 years ago, I mean, there's still some amazing running backs, but it was like a running league. Now, it is a fucking passing league. Shit changes. There's a fucking, it evolves. You gotta be ready for that and prepared for that. And not just write everyone off for, write everyone off as being a hater if they're trying to critique you and make you better. Like Joe was trying to do here for her. What are we watching? We're watching uh, Ronda Rousey calls out Joe Rogan for turning on her. And then here in about uh, two minutes, we're about to get into some content warning with the boys. It's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. You build it, they will come. And when she built the women's bantamweight division and became this dominant force and stopped all these people and looked un invincible, all those women were coming up below her. And they were, they were getting better and they were evolving and they were like the rest of MMA. Mm -hmm. They were reaching this incredibly high level, whereas the women's MMA movement in the, in the early days, you know, three, four years ago, if you watched women's MMA, the skill level was nowhere near uh, the holes in the preparation. NBA is a prime example of sports evolving and adapting. They went f away from more physical style play to all skill and shooting focus. Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah, that makes sense. I was using the NFL because that's the one that I'm like more familiar with, at least to a, a little bit of an extent. The distractions, the fact that she had, you know, movie deals going on. They wanted her to do Roadhouse and yeah. she's scripts and this and agent meetings and all the bullshit, man. It's like a fucking Hollywood. It, it, it was like a Hollywood script. Yeah. Like, this is what happens to you. So I don't think Rogan really has anything against her. I mean, this is yeah. a pretty fair assessment of what happened. You know, he still gives her a lot of credit and talks about how the coach was a big problem and just all the outside distractions. And I think he would probably even take some blame for hyping her up too much. But I'd like to hear what he has to say about it now that she's doing this press tour and giving all these excuses and talking about how he turned on her. I don't think he's said anything about it yet, but I guess maybe he might be having her on his podcast. That would be interesting. But Bro, that would be super interesting, actually, for them to chop it up. Like, 
in a public setting, that'd be crazy. I feel like she probably wouldn't want to do it. You know, she yeah. clearly isn't a big fan of it. I think for her and her mindset, right, it's going to be like kind of like sort of like fuck Joe Rogan because she just saw him as like turning his back on her. And her saying fuck Joe Rogan will also do well to garner her more attention. So it'll just be like a double reinforcing thing, like more attention for saying fuck Joe Rogan. And also she already has like this predetermined idea that Joe Rogan is just like a hater and doesn't fuck with her. So it'll just continue to feed unless like for whatever reason, Joe Rogan's like, yo brother, brother, get on the podcast, you know, let's fucking chop it up and fucking figure this out. And she really like goes and stands on, like, a moral ground business of, like, wanting to, like, not have that target on her back. Or not even target on her back, but just, like, you know, not wanting to, like, continue to, like, kind of beef with someone, you know? Is, even though I'm sure Joe would be open to having her on. So, yeah. I guess we'll see. You know, if it happens, I'll probably cover it. So, make sure you subscribe. And then make sure you go check out my Patreon account. There's a ton of extra content on there. That's I make real. a new video every week that's around 25, 30 minutes. And there are over 70 other videos on there. So if you're a fan of the channel and want more content from me, make sure you check it out. I'll put a link in the description. Okay, I'm going to pause it there. So this is an autoplay. Oh, it's not even on my playlist. Okay, word. Um, but yeah, dude, I don't really have any other fucking thoughts on this. Just the fact that, uh, you know, fucking... Ronda Rousey does not have to make Joe Rogan her enemy again. It sounds like he was just trying to give advice and also, like, talk about it and be honest because, uh, like, that's, again, that's, like, part of his bread and butter. That's part of the shit that he came up on, you know? Thank God Rogan didn't tell her she should pursue a career in comedy. Holy fuck. Uh, Ronda Rousey literally turned Joe Rogan... Brain dead. His takes around the era were mind numbing bad. Yo, I mean, that's true too. Maybe he had to fucking, you know, factor out, like, factor for the fact that he was so high on her and then she, like, didn't fucking perform the way that he expected. So he had to fucking say more shit about it to, like, even it out. Oh, nobody turned on her. She was artificially promoted beyond her, uh, uh, and then failed spectacularly and everyone just went oh I'm the master of hyperbole I say lots of stupid shit that later that I later regret okay don't forget Joe called her a 10 what ain't no way motherfucker commenting poo poo pee pee got 700 likes that's crazy I'm gonna like it though uh yeah dude I don't know I don't have it. I don't have anything else to say 